Rule number zero says, if it has to satisfy or qualify, whatever it is managing, so it has to manage with the relational capabilities. If the low level access is allowed to the system, it shouldn't cross the integrity. All the value that you have in the table with the other value, each and every value that you have in the another table. That is what I will call it as a Cartesian join. Hello everyone, I welcome all of you to the yet another interesting session on uh, SQL commands. So guys, oh, you will be wondering, right, what is that I have in this session? Yes, it's going to be very interesting with respect to your exam point of view. So let's understand what exactly that I have. So it's all about coach rules and joints today. So without wasting much of your time, let me get into the session. So when I speak about coach rule, so you will have to study 12 different rules that we have to follow with respect to the RDBMS. So guys, yes, without wasting much of your time, I'm starting with the rule number zero. So guys, what exactly when it comes to the concept of coach rule, rule number zero says. So let's understand. This rule states that if the system has to qualify or to satisfy everything, whatever the operations that it is doing, so it has to follow and manage the database entirely with the help of relational capabilities. In simple, in short, whatever it is doing, so it has to manage everything with respect to the relational capabilities is what they say according to the rule number zero. I repeat, rule number zero says, if it has to satisfy or qualify, whatever it is managing, so it has to manage with the relational capabilities is what they are saying with respect to the rule number zero according to the court's rule. So fine, we understood that rule number one, information rule, whatever you are storing in a database or in the table, it should be in the form of rows and columns. I have to store my data in the form of rows and columns is what they say in the rule number one according to the information rule. So fine, this is the rule number one. What is the rule number two? It's very simple, guaranteed access. What is the meaning of guaranteed access? So I have stored my information in the rows and columns. So whatever you have stored, so I should be able to or we should be able to access all the data what we have stored. That should be the guaranteed access rule number two. So I have stored, that doesn't mean that I, should, I shouldn't access that. So that is what you need to keep it in your mind. Whatever you are storing, so you should be able to access it. That is the meaning of rule number two. Rule number three, systematic treatment of null. So what is the meaning of systematic treatment of null? So we have got different meanings for null. Sometimes absence of data. Sometimes we use null for different purpose like in a primary key. Now most of the times we use or we give a several meaning to null. All right. So that shouldn't happen. So we have to manage the meaning of the null consistently. The same meaning should be retained for null in all the time. So that is what they say in the rule number three. Moving forward to the rule number four. So when it comes to the rule number four, active online catalog. So guys, you all know catalog in the sense it contains the metadata, data about the data. So that should be in the online. So I should be able to access the data dictionary of the database in the online. So that is what the rule number four says. And uh, when it comes to the rule number five, so guys, powerful and well-structured language should be given for a RDBMS. So well-structured language in the sense we have SQL. So one of the language should be able to interact with the RDBMS. So that has to be given. So that is what we have an example, SQL structured query language. So fine, we have one language. So that's what uh, the rule number says. And when it comes to the rule number six, relational level operations. It should be able to perform the relational level operations. What exactly it means? Uh, so there must be insert, delete, update operations in each level of relations. I should be able to perform update, delete, insert in each level of relations. And also I should be able to perform the operations like set, union, all right. All this operations I should be able to perform. Union, in intersection, minus, all those operations I should be able to perform in each level of relation. That is what the rule number six says. Going forward to the next one, rule number seven. So guys, view updation rules. What exactly uh, updation rule is all about? So guys, 
all the views that are theoretically say for example theoretically i can just say that it can be done but i should be able to do it practically so if i say that theoretically i can update this and practically it should be possible so that is what the rule number 7 says so why rule number 8 physical data independence what exactly physical data independence if i do any modifications to the physical level physical storage that should not affect the logical level so that is what i will call it as a physical data independence so the next one that i have is logical data independence my dear students so if i have uh, data in two different uh, imagine i have the data in one table so that is what the user is viewing in the top level suppose if i divide that table and I, if i make it into two tables so the user view should not get disturbed the user shouldn't get to know that the data is coming from the two different tables there should not know the user view should not get affected due to the changes that i have done in the logical level that is what you need to remember so fine moving forward to the next one integrity independence so what exactly integrity independence so guys when it comes to the integrity independence you need to understand i have to enforce the integrity so without i depend on external program so I should not depend on any other program. That is what the rule number 10 says. I shouldn't depend on any other separate program. So I should, I should maintain, I should be able to maintain the integrity with my own facilities that I have. That is what the rule number 10 says. Moving forward to the rule number 11. So guys, distribution independence. Though the data is distributed in the network, I know from the different multiple sources, but the feel to the user should not be like, you know, they are getting from different multiple sources. They should feel that they are getting it from one single source. That should be maintained is what rule number 11 says. The last rule. So guys, according to the last rules, non-subversion rule. What exactly non-subversion rule says? So guys, listen to me carefully. If the low level access is allowed to the system, it shouldn't cross the integrity. Say for example, the security will allow me okay, to come to the college. That doesn't mean that since the security is allowing me, I shouldn't come anytime whenever I can come. So I should maintain the strict rules. If I want to log in by 8 o'clock, I should log in by 8 o'clock. That is what the rule number 12 says. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the different 12 code rules which is given for us to understand exactly what exactly the rdbms is all about so fine by discussing that uh, the next topic that i have here is all about joins sir what exactly join is all about so when i say join you guys are trying to join two different tables so guys how do i join two different tables and if i join two different tables what will be my output and that is what you need to remember. The second question that you need to remember is how many different types of join that I can perform. So that's what I'm trying to explain with this diagram. My dear students, in this diagram, you need to treat one circle as one table. So fine. So the first image shows you how exactly the join can be performed. Imagine I have left side table and right side table. This circle, the left side circle, I will treat it as a left table and the right side circle, I will treat it as a right table. So when I perform join operation, so the output will be the common things that I have in both the table. So yellow marked place is what it says. The common thing that I have in both the tables, that's going to be the output. So in this join, when I perform full join, so this is with respect to the normal join. When I perform full join, what happens is the combination of both the tables everything all the columns that i have in both the tables will be joined and the complete output of both the tables will be the resultant that i will get if i perform full join so fine when it when it comes to the right join what happens the complete right side table including the common things that i have in the left side table will be the output that i can expect when i perform the right join when it comes to the left join complete left side table including the common things that i have in the right table is what i will be getting when i perform the left join so this is what i have 
So let me just uh, tell you the different types of joints that I can, I can perform. So that is inner joint that returns the rows when there is a match in both the sides. That's what the first diagram says here. This is what I will call it as an inner joint. And then the left joint. So we have already discussed the left joint. So this is what the left joint, the complete left side table will be there including the uh, you no know, similar things that I have in the right side table. And uh, the next one that we have right side joint that is quite opposite to the left side joint which we have already discussed. The complete right side table will be there including the similarity that I have in the left side table. This is the right joint. So observe the complete right side table that I have here including the common similarity that I have in the left side table. That's what I will call it as a right joint. All right, uh, then I have full joint. Full joint will give you both the table. So that's what uh, we have discussed here, both the left side and right side table. All the columns I will be getting in the full joint. And uh, self joint, self joint in the sense, that's a beautiful uh, uh, concept that you need to remember. Self joint in the sense, imagine beautifully, I am trying to write a circle, all right? So fine. So if I join this table to same table, this is what I will call it as a self joint, all right? If I have a table, and the same table is trying to join the same table. That's what I will call it as a self join. And the last one is Cartesian join. So Cartesian join in the sense you will multiply all the value that you have in the table with the other value, each and every value that you have in the another table. That is what I will call it as a Cartesian join. So that's what you need to remember with respect to the last join that we have with this. My dear student, I have come to an end of this session. So hope the information uh, was helping you to learn some concepts in this session. So I have something interesting in the next session. So till then, happy learning. Take care. Bye-bye.